Sydney Water exists to provide best quality, most cost effective water and wastewater solutions for our customers. Sydney Water provides water for the people of the city metropolitan area. Our area of operations is all the way up to the Hawkesbury River and Dengar Island and out in the west we go all the way out to Katoomba and provide water out to Mount Victoria and all the way down to the Illawarra region. It's about 12,000 square kilometres of operation. We supply over 1.4 billion litres of drinking water to homes and businesses. That's 560 Olympic sized swimming pools of treated water every day of the year. Most of our water filtration plants receive water from dams in Southern Highlands and the Illawarra, which are managed by the Sydney Catchment Authority. After the filtration process, it is transported to reservoirs through a vast network of pipes and pumping stations to our customers' taps. The bulk of Sydney's drinking water starts its journey in Lake Burragarang behind Warragamba Dam, which supplies about 80% of Sydney water's needs. From here, raw water runs along the pipeline to three direct water filtration plants at Warragamba, Orchard Hills and Prospect for treatment. Sydney Water has other filtration plants taking water from the protected catchment areas behind Nepean and Cascade Dams. The plant at North Richmond is equipped with extra processes because the source water comes from the Hawkesbury Nepean River rather than a protected catchment. Also, part of our system are private industry owned and operated plants at Illawarra, Warrenora, MacArthur and Prospect. The Prospect plant treats over 80% of Sydney's drinking water. These plants operate under the same strict health and environmental regulations and processes as Sydney Waters plants. The Sydney desalination plant is also part of the drinking water story and supplies water to the Prospect and Warrenora systems under agreement with Sydney Water according to the operating rules set by IPAR. Water quality at the dam is affected by many factors and can vary from day to day. So the Sydney Catchment Authority continually carries out tests to determine the best draw off level to supply us for further treatment. Treatment processes vary at different locations, depending on the technology of the plant and the water it receives, but the basic steps are largely the same. First, raw water passes through screens that remove large materials such as leaves, twigs and other particles. Chemicals are added so that remaining small particles join together, coagulate and form into larger masses, flock. The main coagulant used is ferric chloride. Small amounts of polyelectrolyte are also used to enhance flock formation, aiding the filtration process. The water passes through filters made up of sand or a combination of sand and anthracite, crushed coal. These filters trap the flock and separate it from the filtered water. After filtration, chlorine is added to remove any remaining pathogens. The final water is also treated with small amounts of either lime, caustic soda, or carbon dioxide for pH control. This also helps maximise the disinfection and reduces corrosion in our systems. Not all of our plants receive source water from a protected catchment. Here is the team at North Richmond Water Filtration Plant to explain how we produce drinking water from the Hawkesbury Nepean River. Here we are at the Hawkesbury River at North Richmond Water Filtration Plant. The plant draws its source water from this river and as such the water is quite variable and we have many different processes at the plant to cater for the treatment of this water. At the raw water inlet, we've got some bar screens to keep out the large debris. After the bar screens, there are some finer screens before the water reaches the pumps to keep out the weeds. The pump supplied up to 50 megalitres a day. This is the clarifier process at North Richmond Water Filtration Plant. The water we've received here from the river is full of particles, minerals, colour and turbidity. These particles are negatively charged. If we add a positively charged chemical such as ferric chloride, these particles will then coagulate together. They'll form flocks which will sink to the bottom of the clarifier. A scraper process in the middle of the clarifier will then remove this to the desludge chambers. The supernatant water on top of the clarifier is then passed on to the dual media filter process. DAF, which stands for Dissolved Air Flotation, is a more effective process for removing algae from our source water. Algae may be present in the warmer months of the year. This is the dual media filter process. The dual media in this case is sand and filter coal. Any particulate matter that is left over from the sedimentation or DAF process will be trapped in the media at this point. After the water passes through these dual media filters, it is sent to the GAC contactors. GAC, which stands for granulated activated carbon, 
puts a further polish on the water and removes any taste and odour compounds that may be present. After filtration, chlorine is added to the final water. This is to kill any remaining pathogens. Fluoride is added to the final water as a requirement by New South Wales Health to help prevent tooth decay. We test our drinking water according to the Australian Drinking Water Guidelines and New South Wales Health requirements. The guidelines were set to ensure drinking water is firstly safe and secondly meets aesthetic targets such as taste, odour and appearance. Our world-class water is now ready to begin its journey to one of our 250 reservoirs and 160 pumping stations. Before travelling through our 21,000 kilometre pipe network, the customers taps. <laughs>